Hello. Today I was going to use these two ball bearings to measure a taper that I'm going to bore into this piece of aluminum. And then I'm also going to use a variation of the method that Joe Pizinski showed to use this large ball to set the mouth opening of this taper. Okay, I faced and chamfered the corner slightly on uh, one end of each of these. And then what I was going to do is take some dicum, mark it, you know, just put some dicum here and here, and then scribe a line at the appropriate heights. I hope the brush on this is good. For some reason, every time I pull this brush out of this bottle now, I think of outside screwball. I set my vernier height gauge to 1.3 inches. And now what I was going to do is scribe a line on this. Spot on. Okay, now I'm going to drill a hole through this. 11.30 seconds, I'm going to step it through the bits. Okay, I really hope you can see this. Um, what I did was I, uh, I moved the compound all the way back and put a, uh, a round uh, tool steel against the uh, dovetail. Um, I rounded the ends before I did that. And then I put a three degree and a one half degree angle gauge block on the side of that. And I just spent some time getting it together. And that is a one tenth indicator. So, um, so that is at 3.25 degrees. Okay, let's get boring. Okay, let's start cutting the taper. I am going to use the cross slide until I start measuring, and then from that point on, to make the hole size proper, I will be using the, uh, the carriage. Okay, I got some rubbing or something. Okay, this bit is too big for the hole that I uh, was boring. If I measured the width here, it was fine, but the problem is, is from the center of this down here, the radius of that from there to there makes the diameter of this a lot bigger than the cross here. So what I, so what I did is bought a boring bar set from uh, Grizzly uh, with three sizes and they're small sizes, and the small one I have out. Um, for the price of these, I think the quality is pretty good, and it gives me a nice set of small boring bars because that's mostly what I did. And then uh, here is the small one that I mounted and put center. And even on that angle there, it cleared, it cleared the hole, no problem. So, and this did a beautiful taper. So that made a beautiful taper in there. Um, uh, you know, the hole just has a beautiful taper. And I was going to try to measure the taper with the two balls. Um, I did not get any video of using that new boring bar. To be quite honest, I hooked it up and I was in a hurry to get done. Let's get to the main point of this, is measuring this. Okay, I'm going to use two balls of different sizes to uh, measure this taper. So let's measure the ball diameters. Okay. The large one I'm going to call diameter 1. The small one I'm going to call diameter 2. And then from that we'll get radius 1 and radius 2. And then we're going to measure height 1 and height 2. So let's measure the ball diameter 1. Okay, that zeroes. Okay. 
I'm going to go with two, three. Point five six two three is the large ball. So that will make the radius 0 0.281. I'll just round it down because it was closer to 2, I think. 2811. The smaller ball. Zero point five zero zero one. So half of that is zero point two five. I'm just going to call it two five zero. Okay, let's measure the height. Uh, this I zeroed on my granite plate, so I know it's zero. And actually, since these are relative, it really don't matter. Okay, that's in there. Let's measure height one. This don't have a vernier on it. I'm just going to call it one. Somewhere between zero and one. So the height of that one is 0 0.001. Let's put the bottom one in. There's a smaller one. Uh, you read this backwards, so that's 0.5, it's past 75, so that's 75, 80, 81, 0.5 roughly. 0 0.581, that might be a 0.5, but can't really measure that. So let's put that in the computer program and see what it comes up with. Okay, a derived equation to find the taper from the uh, two different ball diameters and the ball heights. So it's pretty straight, simple in the derivation. If you want me to show it, just put it post and then I'll put it up. Um, uh, but uh, let's put in what we got. Okay, ball radius one was 0 0.2811. Ball height one was 0 0.001. Ball radius two was 0. 250 and ball height 2 was 0 0.581 and if you remember we were shooting for 3.25 okay 3.248 I don't know why I have that there let me delete that uh, 3.248 so that's 3.25 degrees so I accurately cut that so that's pretty good so that's something that you can just take two ball bearings that I bought at the hardware store. I don't have gauge ball sets. I measured them very accurately and uh, came up with the angle that I was trying to cut. Um, the other thing is, is the derivation that I've already done is the width from ball height. Let's give that a try to see if it comes up with the same width. And when this one, the height above the surface is positive and the height below the surface is negative. So these would be negative ball heights. So the ball height for ball one was 0 0.001 with a minus sign. The radius was whoop, minus 0 0.001. The uh, radius was 0 0.2811. The angle was 3.25, so we came up with the width of the mouth is 0.5951433. I'm going to copy it down here. 5951433. Okay, let's see what that is for the other ball. It should be real close to that. Of course, we're just measuring to the thousands. Uh, the ball height was negative 0.581. The radius was 0 0.250. The half angle was 3.25. We measured it. So the width at the opening is 0 0.595-1807. Now we're only good down to three, four decimal places, and that's where they agree, down to four decimal places, which is amazing, and I think lucky. 
Um, I'd, I'd accept three decimal places for the width. So, uh, but anyway, if anybody wants a copy of this program, I'm going to find a way to uh, put it up somewhere. Uh, just send me a comment here, and uh, once I figure out where I can put it or who I can give it to to distribute for free, uh, I'll do that. But anyway, on this, I did, uh, Joe Pizinski did a derivation. I did trigonometric derivation, so my equations are different than would come up. I just wanted something that you put in these variables, and it comes up with a height for this. I wanted something that you just put in these variables, and it comes up with a width for that. So that way you just look at this picture, figure out what you're measuring, put it in here. Here's the equation if you want to use it. And there's your output. On these, I put unit is equal to inch. Uh, to be quite honest, unit is equal to anything. It could be inches, it could be millimeters, it could be miles, it could be whatever, as long as the length units are all the same. So on these, they're all inch. They could be, oh heck, you could put, make them parsecs if you want. Uh, inch, inch, the degrees would be the same, but it's inch. And uh, these are inches as well, so you can change that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I enjoyed making it. I got to buy a new boring bar set for this uh, video. I got to cut some accurate tapers, which I'm pretty happy, and measure them. Um, that program, I will find a way to get it available to people, but if anybody wants it, just uh, shoot me a post, and I'll find a way to get it to you. Thank you very much. Goodbye.